Welcome in Southern California. This is Radio Free Los Angeles. Do you copy? Repeat, do you copy? Now transmitting from behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of California, we bring you the voice of free men, free markets, and limited constitutional government. Welcome to citizen-sponsored Radio Free Los Angeles with President of the California Taxpayers Union, Mike Alexander, and Editor of the Taxpayer Gazette, Jonathan Wilson. All right, we're live. We're ready. Coming to you with our election, pre-election uh, special here. Well, I sure wish I had some radio time on Tuesday night because I think it's going to be fun to see what's happening in this country one way or the other. This is Mike Alexander back with you here at Radio Free Los Angeles. And before I forget, we want you to be part of the show by calling in uh, to us. What's our number here? They're not displaying it. 866? Yeah, give us a call. 866. 866- 866-870-5752. There you are. And, and that voice that you just heard is the voice from a distant past. Uh, he he was gone for a week, Jonathan Wilson, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the wedding there with Ben Mathis. Oh, we had a great time at the wedding. You know, He got right. married uh, on Saturday, Yeah, and the whole wedding party was staying at the Langham. Uh-huh. And the Boston Red Sox were also staying at the hotel. So oh, oh, now, none, of this, ex- none of this Boston evening. Red Sox yeah. rooting, boy. Hey, well, I have to say, I'm a Red Sox fan. <laughs> oh, jeez. Man, there go the ratings. You know, we, we, we've been doing very well here up until you said that. Uh, but at any rate, uh, uh, it's uh, congratulations again to Ben. He's a uh, good friend of all, all that we do here. And um, so it's good to have you back. And you should know that uh, you know we didn't do the Government Grifter of the Week Award last week because you were gone. And we got busy, and that's really kind of been your baby. Uh, and we actually got calls complaining that we hadn't done the Government Grifter of the Week. But I think we're going to make up for it this week. Yeah, I think we, we're going to have a Good yeah. gov- government grifter this week. So stay <laughs> tuned. You're going to love it. Hey, uh, speaking uh, uh, of uh, special guests here and special events, uh, at the uh, 8.30 to 9 o'clock hour, we're going to have my uh, good friend Steve Frank on, who is uh, uh, the editor of the California News and Political Review here in this uh, state. He will come on to discuss the, uh, the 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 ballot propositions and so forth. Now, everybody is or should be thinking about voting. If you vote by absentee ballot, dig that thing out. If for any reason you have lost your absentee ballot, don't worry. Go to your local polls or to any poll at polling place and give them your name. Now, down there at your local one, it'll show that you have a ballot, but uh, you can go in there. You can tell them that you lost your ballot. They will give you a provisional ballot. You can sign, fill that out, and you can vote. So, please, please don't worry or or tell me that you you know that you lost your homework here and you couldn't vote. That's not how it works. For everybody else, you go down to your polling place, you'll find your name there, you vote on Tuesday live. Now, if you have uh, if you have a, a mail-in ballot, you're probably best off at this point to save it and take it to the polling place on uh, Tuesday morning. I've done that often to ensure that it actually gets in the box that gets counted and so forth. Your ballots are numbered. They'll know what to do. Uh, on voting day itself, go down to the poll. You have a polling place, whether you vote that day or by mail. Go down there. If for any reason they don't have your name, you can follow the same procedure. You can tell them what uh, your name and your address, and they will once again give you a provisional ballot. So please don't tell me that uh, the uh, – uh, that you couldn't vote because you either didn't get your mail-in ballot, you lost your mail-in ballot, or they lost your name. Please do not worry about that. Ask for a provisional ballot and vote anyway. And one of the things we want to talk with Steve Frank about is how critical, believe it or not, 
how critical some of the California House races are here in Southern California, how critical they are uh, to the retention of the uh, of the House, uh, the retention of the Senate by Republicans, which is not something I particularly root for. I'm actually rooting against turning over any branch of government, starting with dog catcher, to any nutcase left-wing Democrat. Or for any nutcase left-wing Republican, we've got plenty of those out there too. But in any event, uh, we're not too worried about the Senate. But over on the uh, uh, on the House side, things are much worse. And and if we fail to go out, that is, if you, the people listening uh, to me right now, our audience, uh, patriot, uh, you know, I don't care what your party is, you have to get out there and vote. Otherwise, we're looking at Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House, Maxine Waters, crazy Maxine, uh, you know, uh, whom uh, I'm I'm supporting for the Democrat nominee for president in, in 2020. I think she'd be perfect, but we don't need her in charge of anything. We just need her to be the Democrat nominee for president in 2020. Uh, you know, the, those two nutcases will be there, and you could just go down the list. You know, there is, uh, there's no bad idea that these people, uh, you know, haven't uh, embraced thoroughly over the years. So this is crunch time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, everybody is talking about <clears throat> about the what I call the federal follies. The uh, the federal government, the state, excuse me, uh, the, uh, the the Senate— and the the house they are very very important we also know that it is a referendum of sorts on donald trump in fact everybody has tried to make everything about donald trump and you got to be careful about this and this gets into why this show does what it does i will remind all of you that government at all level, federal, state, and local, spends unbelievably, or perhaps believably, over $8 trillion a year. That's just what's budgeted. That's not their debt. It's $8 trillion in, $8 trillion out every year. And what that means here uh, for, for all of us uh, is, is that there is so much at stake, but half of that amount of money, Four trillion of it is spent at the state and local level. So you are making a big mistake if if all you do is focus on the state and federal, excuse me, on the federal and never focus at all on the state and local where the other half of that incredible amount of money is is being spent and where they run up incredible debt in the form of bonds. And there's a ton of bond issues that are on the uh, the ballot up and down the state right here in Los Angeles County. Now, for those of you who who need guidance, who have not already voted, we highly recommend that you go to CaliforniaTaxpayersUnion.org. This website is uh, put together and managed and edited by uh, Jonathan Wilson. Once again, Jonathan Wilson, great job on all this stuff here. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, used thank it. you. I, I think we covered everything on well, the recommendations. Why, why don't you talk uh, to the audience, if you would? Do you have have the website up? I don't have it in front of me. Well, here, I got it. Uh, just work off of uh, my iPad there. Yeah, if you go to our yeah. website, we have all uh, our recommendations. Uh, we've got a tab for statewide offices, and we've got U.S. Congress, California Legislature, that's uh, the Senate and the Assembly, and we have great judicial recommendations, which uh-huh. we get from Craig Huey. Yeah, Craig has done uh, just yeoman's work mm-hmm. uh, out there. And then we've got uh, the, a list of all the propositions and the recommendations. And then we have a locals tab, which is really just San Gabriel Valley. Right. Uh, we've got South Pasadena's uh, Measure N, which you want to right. vote yes on. Yes, get and, rid of that uh, UUT. Pasadena's <laughs> Measure I. Nine. No, yet, no. No. No, that- no on I. Remember, I think that's going to pass, though. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Well, I do, uh, just because of lack of uh, of organized opposition. To well, it. and they're spending a lot of money. On, they are. on that campaign. Yeah. So 
Yeah, and same way in Burbank. Don't forget about Burbank. And, yeah. and so for, for anybody in this audience who wants to know how to vote, we got music coming up. Uh, yeah, for anybody in this audience who wants to know how to vote, you vote against any bond measure and any proposed new tax or increase in tax, unless you're absolutely crazy. You, know, you have to vote against that. Well, in any event, uh, we're, we're glad to have you here. And uh, you can uh, uh, call here uh, at 1-800-866-870-5752. Be part of the show. We'll be back in just a minute. If you like what you're hearing and would like to support Radio Free Los Angeles and the California Tax Limitation Committee, please call area code 626-792-1772, 626-792-1772, or kindly visit our website, catlc.net, catlc.net. You can also watch Radio Free Los Angeles on Facebook Live at RadioFreeLA.us. If you'd like to talk with Radio Free Los Angeles, the phone lines are wide open. 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-5752. We're live, local, and here to talk with you. 866-870-KRLA. Okay, Mike Alexander and Jonathan Wilson back with you. Uh, we, we should have a few callers. I'm waiting for one caller in for South Pasadena to give us an update down there. But in the meanwhile, I want to tell you about uh, a wonderful uh, outing that I had yesterday at the 50th anniversary of the Reason Foundation. As many of you may know, the Reason Foundation is kind of the uh, a, a, one of the larger and and better known libertarian think tanks, and they've been instrumental in developing policy in a number of areas, and uh, they have just been a tremendous influence uh, on public policy. Have contrib- continued their input, and nowhere have they been uh, more uh, uh, far sighted than in the area of education. And as you know out there, my passion is school choice, and you're going freedom and education. You're going to hear a lot about that. But I want to thank Jim Enstrom. Uh, uh, Dr. Enstrom is, a, um, uh, I think, a retired professor uh, there at uh, UCLA. He was gracious enough to invite me and introduce me to some other wonderful people and to reintroduce me to some others. I had a chance to meet with uh, Professor Matt Malkin, uh, professor of physics, I believe, and a uh, you know, wonderful libertarian. So, Matt, it was great to meet you. And uh, and we also got to uh, to meet again Lisa Snell. And Lisa has, has uh, been with the Reason Foundation for 20 years and is a leading expert on a school choice, in fact, on school financing. It just recently completed a study about the Los Angeles Unified so-called school district and and uh, their problems. And um, uh, Lisa, if you're listening, you and I need to get together because we'd love to have you on the show to walk us through uh, these issues that affect us all. Because when uh, when we have hundreds of thousands uh, of youngsters, ultimately millions of young people, go through our large urban schools and don't get an education, we have problems. Yeah, that's a price that we all pay. First, we pay the price of money because as a society, we don't get what we need. Those kids, those future citizens don't get what they need. We don't get what we need from them because we do need each other. Uh, in our society. These institutions called schools are failing, and they're nothing but uh, uh, left-wing, liberal, public employee union madrasas uh, with, 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 that are there to uh, to brainwash and uh, condition uh, and uh, propagandize. That's all they are over there. So it, it was a, it was a great program, and they also uh, gave a, an award recognizing Frank ba- uh, Baxter, former ambassador. Uh, I forgot which country it was that he was, uh, but uh, Frank has done yeoman's work with his 
operation called LA Alliance. They've operated a string of uh, charter schools uh, and have managed to uh, select the students that are needed uh, and wanted to go to school. And they're getting about 75% graduation to uh, to college. And I think 75% of them are, uh, or most of them are qualified for the UC system. So he's proven uh, that uh, uh, private education, private management can work. And those schools, even though they're technically public entities, are in fact privately managed. And, and that's what uh, makes them uh, special. So uh, once again, uh, Jim Enstrom, I hope you're listening uh, tonight. Thanks so much for the invitation. And I definitely will be in touch and at the next event. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we have other uh, things uh, going on here, uh, other elections. And one of them is down in uh, South Pasadena, where they have Measure N, as in Nancy, or I should say, N as in no more taxes. Measure N will repeal, that is, get rid of the current utility users tax, which is 10%, generates about $3.6 million uh, there. We have Guillermo uh, from South Pasadena on line one, uh, who would like to give us an update. How are you this evening, Guillermo? Really good, Mike. Thank oh. you for for uh, having us giving us an opportunity, a little voice to to give to the people, and uh, uh, we're doing fine here in South Pasadena. We're just uh, hoping uh, that that everything goes according to plan. Yes. Well, that plan has included, uh, you, you guys uh, down there put a local initiative on the ballot, which is like a statewide initiative. Uh, only it applies only to South Pasadena. Over uh, with two or three efforts, you guys managed to collect enough signatures to get it on the ballot. And even after the city delayed and moved things around, you're finally getting it on the ballot. Now you're threatening yeah. to take three point six million dollars away from these thieves, and they're going crazy down there, aren't they? Yeah, well, definitely they're. Uh... <laughs> They're doing all they can to, you know, to um, to put their information on the people, saying that they're going to lose this money and the city is going to be going to the pits, and you know, and, and well, the city is going to go to the pits, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's going to happen eventually, pretty pretty soon, sooner than later. That mm-hmm. they think. Uh, but they don't realize that, uh, or they just simply ignore all the warnings and everything. But we've, yes. we've, we've been able to uh, at least open the eyes of some people here in South Pasadena, even though we have no no money or no budget, big budget like they do. They mm-hmm. have big budget. They're using uh, your money, that's why. They have expensive <laughs> mailers that they have sent yeah. to everybody, and... And there's expensive signs and and all kinds of uh, propaganda that you know they're noted for. And, but and you guys, uh, with the uh, uh, able assistance of Jonathan Wilson, the editor of the Taxpayer Gazette, you yeah. guys were able to put together uh, what an eight-page special edition of the Taxpayer Gazette for South Pasadena election, right? Yes, we were able to do that, and it's been very effective. A lot of people uh, have given us feedback, uh, neighbors and people uh, stop us on the street or uh, or in a restaurant and say, hey, I said, you know, and you have some valid points, and they have say that that really is very informative for them to know all these things, and that some other people have no idea. Right things were going on. So it's been a very effective medium for us, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Taxpayer Gazette, definitely. Yeah, they they hate that thing down there. Uh, but what the ta- – and by the way, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Taxpayer Gazette uh, was uh, printed up by the California Taxpayers Union, uh, you know, working with um, – um, 
you know, activists you know, in South Pasadena, local citizens, private citizens, and we put together all the data and the information on the salaries. And we put the data <clears throat> in there about the pension debt. They owe at least $29 million, maybe as much as $100 million, and they have no plan for even admitting that it's a problem, much less paying it off. Uh, yeah. It's my impression that the city is, by and large, just ignored you in your arguments. Oh but, yes, definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. they continue to to insist on their arguments, uh, on their narrative. You know, the same, uh, scaring the people uh, out mm-hmm. uh, with false information. Definitely. Yes. Well, <coughs> yeah. We, thanks to the Taxpayer Gazette, we were able to reach uh, ten thousand households in South Pasadena, Beautiful. and, and that, that's been a great, um, a really, it caused a great impact. That's and, real freedom of the press. Yes, that's the real <laughs> one. I know. They criticize that. Down there. They say, well, it's just uh, 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 an advertisement masquerading as a newspaper. Oh, yeah? Well, how about what you guys run down there at your other places, uh, you know, South Pass Review or whatever it is, or the, or the mainstream media? You know, yeah, they've always got a point of view and a propaganda hustle going on, and they're throwing eggs at us. At least we put on the back who we are, and we put out real facts. They won't even respond to them. Yeah, you know, they just uh, you know, uh, you know, call yeah. us names. Yeah, they just decide to like nothing happened, and but uh, you know what we notice is is it's been very quiet. Um, during this past, uh, just approaching the last week before yep. the election, it's been very quiet, uh, unusually quiet. It seems like they're a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's nothing like citizens exercising their rights and their voter cha- franchise and the right to free speech. Well, Guillermo, I want to thank you very much for coming on. And remember, everybody there in South Pasadena, it is no on N. Excuse me, yes on N, yes, on N. which is the same as saying no yes. to more taxes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike. Uh, you're welcome, Guillermo. It. Thanks very much. Uh, I've got time for uh, how many more minutes do I have in there, Jeff? I've got three minutes. I've got Brent from Los Angeles. I'll take him quick, and then uh, uh, so bring him up. Are you there, Brent? Yes, I am. Yeah. Hello. Hey, well, thanks yeah. for calling in. How are you this evening? I'm outstanding, but I just want to say, I, I give a message from my heart to the re- listeners of Radio Free America in Los yes. Angeles. This election, all true Americans will need to be voting Republican across the board. Mm-hmm. There simply is no other. There, there simply is no other choice. The Republicans, tragically, are the only party that still believe in God, our transcendent Constitution, a unified nation, and the Democrats interminably outlaw God, detest mm-hmm. our Constitution, and divide and destroy our country. And so ethics and truth and simple common sense all will demand a Republican vote for freedom over the slavery of democratic socialism. Hey, you know, I agree with you, and, and, uh, and I'll tell you this, uh, you know, the, the Republican Party, uh, you know, they're, you know the, they're not exactly model citizens or, or uniformly uh, or, or model politicians, but we are up against a new and different brand of democratic mm-hmm. politics. And, and if, yeah. you're, if you're Jewish, if you're Christian, if you're a believer— uh, mm-hmm. If you want to adhere to your, uh, your your own version of family values, if you object to any of this, uh, you are going to be singled out and you're going to be persecuted. And they're going to yeah. do that through the government. They don't just disagree with you. They they want to punish you. They want to see you. They want to pursue you with their power. And I can't they say to- that I disagree, Brent. Yeah, they want to destroy you, and I'm not saying vote for a perfect party. The Republicans, boy, we got problems. Mm-hmm. But the choice against what the Democrats are, I mean, they're trying to outlaw God. It's That's right. That's right. They hate us. They hate America. Uh, they hate our values. They hate our traditions. 
uh, you know, and, and we we just have to move against this, and we must constantly be on guard against any expansion of government. Be, and, and let's take the local government, the local cities. These are not benign institutions. They mm-hmm. they are all part of the great collective fully into vertically and horizontally integrated mechanism of government that is there to implement a totalitarian agenda all the way from the feds on down to local brent i'm gonna you hear that music that means that uh, we're on the hard break and then coming up in the i want to thank you for your call as always my friend god bless um uh, in the second half hour that is after the the eight thirty break here. We're going to have on Steve Frank from California News and Political Reviews, who will go over. Uh, we'll do a complete review of the situation. If you want to call in, call in after the nine o'clock hour or just before the nine o'clock hour, because we're probably going to run the whole half hour with Steve. This is Mike Alexander, Jonathan Wilson, Radio Free Los Angeles, RadioFreeLosAngeles.net. Go there, join up, get on our list. And give us some love. See you after the break. Do you copy? Repeat. Do you copy? Now transmitting from behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of California, we bring you the voice of free men, free markets, and limited constitutional government. Welcome to citizen-sponsored Radio Free Los Angeles with President of the California Taxpayers Union, Mike Alexander, and Editor of the Taxpayer Gazette, Jonathan Wilson. Yeah, you betcha it's Mike Alexander back here with you, uh, with Jonathan Wilson. And we're into our second half hour. We're waiting for uh, Steve... Frank, uh, to come on the line, then we'll start our special uh, election ed- edition uh, review. And so, uh, yeah, just let us know. But we've got plenty to do in, in the meantime. And I'm going to start what one of my favorite ones. You know, one of the uh, issues uh, here we, we uh, on, on the local that is just incredible. Uh, and somebody wonders uh, you know, how these things get started. But over in the city of Los Angeles, believe it or not, there is a, uh, I think it's Measure B. Yeah. The city of Los Angeles has Measure B, Public Bank Charter Amendment, uh, is over there. And basically, if you vote yes, it would be a vote in favor of establishing a public bank in the city of Los Angeles. Now, in the city of Los Angeles, I don't know how many gazillion uh, uh, banks. We have Steve Frank on there. I'll come to it because it's too good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we now have uh, on uh, as our special guest here tonight, uh, Steve Frank. Are you there, Steve? I, I am right here. Hey, how are and you, my friend? By the, by the way, that bank that Los Angeles wants to start, the actual purpose of it is to take in marijuana money. Yes, that right. the uh, genesis of it. Right. Yeah, I pointed that out last week when our uh, what, we, we had a caller. It's so the dopers will have some place to put their money be, because I, I, know, I know a lot of bankers, no shortage of them. Uh, and, and they'll tell you that they don't want to take the marijuana money because it's still illegal under federal law. Is that your impression as to why the banks uh, won't take their money, Steve? Oh, oh, not only my impression, the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, had made it clear that no banks can take money from no marijuana operators. And because this bank is set up for the purpose of taking marijuana money, the federal government will not give it a charter or recognize it. Right. Won't give it any credit rating and won't guarantee any of the uh, the savings. Yeah, or or per, thank God permitted access to the Federal Reserve. Yes, you know, so, I mean this just this is just the dumbest thing, and I I don't know who it was. I I saw Herb Wesson's name uh, attached to this, but you know this whole business of. Uh, uh, of marijuana, money, and all that. H- have you seen that Boehner is all in on pot now? 
That was his, uh, in fact, it's a quote. He said, I'm well, all he, in a pot. Yeah, he is a consultant <laughs> to one of the major manufacturers, yeah. uh, major uh, uh, vendors and uh, financiers of the pot industry. Yeah. And that's expected. But, you know, while you're talking about uh, a bank in L.A. that will be on the uh, ballot on Tuesday, yeah. uh, you should also know that the state of California uh, is proposing a state bank for the same purpose. Uh huh. I I did not realize that. Now, is is that just up in front of the legislature, or uh, is that uh, on, on the ballot somewhere? No, it's going to be in front of the legislature. Okay. And here's one of the great problems of uh, what's going to happen on Tuesday is that the Democrats, with a uh, simple majority, and they're going to have a super majority in the assembly and possibly a supermajority in the state Senate, uh, and a yeah. governor that is uh, very am- amenable uh, to, to the weed, to marijuana, yes. uh, it will probably become law, and then the state will sue the federal government for not giving it a, a charter and guaranteeing the deposits. Yeah, so, that, that would, when, you, when you say a sympathetic governor, that would be who, Gavin Newsom there, or John Cox, oh, yes, or but, both of them? Oh, John Cox is not sympathetic to this at all. I didn't think but, so. Now that we're talking about governors, you know, uh, uh, let's hit if we can uh, the you know the ballot recommendations. We have John Cox, uh, the obvious recommendation uh, for governor. How is he doing? How close is it? Well, and so far to the polls, and one of the most fascinating things this afternoon. Fox uh, had an interview with Frank Luntz, the, uh, yes. uh, the world-famous uh, pollster, mm-hmm. and he said that the polling this year is not reliable, not predictive, and does nothing uh, for, for the body politic. He's discounting all of the polls. Yeah. But the one thing that we do know, I mean, not but, but one thing we do know is that there seems to be incredible voting activity on the part of both parties throughout the country. Uh, it, it, do you share that impression? Oh, yes. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in a couple of states, uh, there were within forty to 60,000 of the vote totals from 216, and the people haven't gone to the polls yet on Tuesday. And in Texas, over 5 million people have already voted. That's what I understand. That's incredible. And, and we have o, o Beto. Uh, O'Rourke down there, whose real name I found out is Robert Francis O'Rourke. You know, with that nickname of Beto, I, I thought maybe uh, his mom might have been uh, a Latina lady uh, from Mexico or Central America or South America. Turns out he has zero uh, Hispanic blood. He just run around styling his Beto, whatever the hell that means. Well, Michael, yeah. I've known you for a while, yeah. and I can assure you, you are as Hispanic as uh, – Robert Francis O'Walken. <laughs> Zero. Right? <laughs> Although I probably speak more Spanish than he can. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, he speaks Spanish very well. Does he really? All right. Well, we can, yeah, we can compete. So, uh, 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 Lieutenant Gov- Governor, we've got no recommendation on that. Uh, do you share that call, no, no recommendation on Lieutenant Governor? Well, I'm going a little bit further than that. I'm not going to vote for lieutenant governor. If I have a choice between a mild-mannered socialist and a radical socialist, I refuse to be complicit in electing a socialist. (laughs) I'm I'm with you there. And, and of course, you and I are are both uh, for Mark Moisure. We had him here for his updates here as he cycled throughout the state. Any idea how he's doing, uh, Steve. Well, I think he's doing fairly well. Uh, his opponent, the Democrat uh, Alex Padilla, the guy that refuses to run honest elections in California yes, right. and refuses to take illegal aliens off of the uh, voting rolls, uh, <coughs> has not put on a campaign at all. And quite frankly, people are upset with the uh, dishonest elections. And I think Mark may uh, have a surprise on Tuesday night. He's a good man. I think he'll do it. Next up, we have Konstantinos Roditis, a good Greek uh, running for controller. Uh, how's he doing out there? He's actually uh, run a fairly uh, large campaign mm-hmm. traveling throughout the state. Uh, he has not had the resources to run a media campaign or a campaign in the mail, but uh, I, I think he'll do okay. 
Uh, unfortunately, he will probably get between 35 and 40 percent of the vote. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Democrats are on track to keep that. Greg Conlon is running for treasurer. Do you like Craig? Greg? Uh, well, I've known him since nine, uh, since 2001. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been friends. Uh, he's from the Bay Area, uh, a very nice guy. And uh, he, he uh, has been on the ballot before, has yes. name recognition, and I think he may get upwards of 40 to 45 percent of the vote. Good. Yeah, we, uh, I've spoken with him before and supported him in his previous efforts. Attorney General Stephen Bailey, I mean, there really isn't any other choice. We've got Comrade Becerra, uh, uh, who's Javier or Xavier, uh, for those of you who use the English pronunciation, Xavier Becerra, uh, a flat-out Marxist communist who's our current attorney general and who trashed uh, Proposition 6's uh, uh, ballot summary, title and summary. Steve Bailey's really the guy to vote vote for there. I spent uh, Saturday and Sunday of last week, a weekend, with uh, uh, Judge Bailey, and uh, bright man, I've I've been with him before this, but he always impresses me. He understands the law, understands the role of the attorney general. Yes. And let's not forget that uh, uh, Becerra has sued uh, the president 38 times yes. just for the heck of it. Right. And wasted tax dollars both federally and uh, here in the state. Yes, uh, you acted just like a Confederate. Insurance Commissioner Steve Poisner, uh, no argument there. State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Marshall Tuck. Now, he, Marshall Tuck is not necessarily one of us, but he has garnered uh, the endorsement of a number of uh, people, and we have endorsed him on our side. What's your take on Marshall Tuck? Well, I've had opportunities to talk to him, meet with him, hear him debate, and there's only one issue that I agree with him on, and that's school choice. Yes. And my belief is that is a big enough issue and an important enough issue that if we had a superintendent of public instruction that supported school choice, all the other issues go away. Because yes. parents have, have the right to choose a quality education, whether it be a private school, a charter school, or a government school, that helps all schools. Yeah, it does. Yeah, totally with you there. And and I hope the marshal's as good as his uh, word. U.S. Senator. Now, I assume you have no endorsement in that race either. Well, let's see. We have a choice between Kevin Leon. Wow. That's his real, that's his real name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who is an open socialist, who is a single payer, the author of SB 54, a sanctuary state. He yeah. wants to protect felons from foreign countries in our state versus what I call uh, the smear artist, Diane yeah. Feinstein, right. who may be the most corrupt senator in the U.S. Senate. <laughs> hey, okay, now you hear that music. We're up on a break. We'll be back in just a moment with Steve uh, Frank of California News and Political excuse me, political news and reviews and views, whatever. I always muff that. We'll be back with him. Uh, Mike Alexander, uh, RadioFreeLosAngeles.net. Back in a minute. If you like what you're hearing and would like to support Radio Free Los Angeles and the California Tax Limitation Committee, please call area code 626-792-1772, 626-792-1772, or kindly visit our website, catlc.net, catlc.net. You can also watch Radio Free Los Angeles on Facebook Live at RadioFreeLA.us. If you'd like to talk with Radio Free Los Angeles, the phone lines are wide open. 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-5752. We're live, local, and here to talk with you. 866-870-KRLA. All right, back with you here. Mike Alexander, uh, <clears throat> RadioFreeLosAngeles.net with Jonathan Wilson, editor of the Taxpayer Gazette. And we're uh, very pleased to have with us uh, for the, I don't know, third or fourth time, my good friend Steve Frank. Steve, before we we go any further, how you feeling? 
I am feeling great. Good. I'm ready to take on uh, the world. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, be, be, because a little bit earlier on, you 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 hit some uh, shall we say some rough weather there, and uh, you you slowed down a bit. But it sounds like you're back up to uh, maximum speed, and I, I'm delighted that you're feeling well again, my friend. Yeah, well, June of two seventeen, I had a heart attack and a triple bypass, and. I was pretty much out of commission for a little over three months, and it took me another three months to get up to speed. I know. And I'm and back. And, and just I'm just when they were just when they were celebrating, you got out of the hospital. <laughs> He's back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, yeah. It it is uh, so much fun. Uh, yeah, we we have a number of other people. We have one guy called it. We were talking about Senator, the smear artist, uh, Kevin Leon, now going by De Leon uh, uh, versus that. So we had a guy call it last last week, and, and and his take on it was simple. He says he said that Feinstein is so old. That will definitely get an opportunity to revote this race. So he's voting for uh, for Feinstein uh, on, well, the, I, on the theory that the term will be short lived. Actually, we don't get to revote. Let's say, for the sake of discussion, <clears throat> in June of two nineteen, yeah, something happens to her, or we do not get to vote for the for a new senator for the next five and a half years. The governor appoints the yes. senator. No, Can I, you I, imagine if Newsom becomes governor, Senator Swalwell or yes. uh, Senator Schiff? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, and yeah, vote against that moron. We got uh, Baldanian or whatever his name is. Yeah, that Adam Schiff, I just the thought of him in charge of his. You know, we have history with that guy here. L.A. County, Jim McDonald has our, our endorsement. How about you? Well, uh, he's been a very good sheriff. I I think he uh, has done the job of uh, reforming the uh, sheriff's department, Mm -hmm. and I'm fully supportive of him. Good. Now, uh, by the way, folks out there, do not underestimate the impact of these so-called lesser offices. There's nothing lesser about them. And two of those are Board of Equalization members for District 1 and District 3. We have two good people out there. Ted Gaines and Rick Marshall. Do you share our endorsement of those guys, uh, Steve? Well, both of them have been friends of mine for more than twenty years. Full good. disclosure. You got good and friends, I, uh, and I think that uh, Ted Gaines is is going to make a great member of the Board of Equalization, and I think Rick Marshall can indeed be a great member of the Board of Equalization as well. But he needs support and votes on uh, Tuesday. That's right. Well, he'll have ours. And remember, all all, all of our endorsements, uh, it, which are blend, I think we've used some of Steve's, blended it all in here. Steve is always a source of information for us in coming up with the in, in, endorsements here. You'll find all of those at CaliforniaTaxpayersUnion.org. Just click in there for the uh for the ballot recommendations. Let's quickly uh, go over, uh, we've been through the propositions. It's yes on six and a few others. We can cover that. But, you know, right now, uh, and, and it's, uh, to my mind, it's, it's great to have you in particular on because of your broader knowledge. And since we only have one segment left, I'd really like to take advantage of that. We've all read at, you know, uh, uh, at great length the uh, how hard fought the house races are, and I've seen more than a few articles here recently that the house races right here in Southern California could end up being pivotal. Would you be kind enough, Steve, to comment on those uh, critical uh, uh, districts that are in play? Because we have an audience out there in that area that need to hear from you. Well, the, uh, at the top of the list is, Senator, uh, is Congressman Steve Knight, Santa Cruz Valley, <laughs> excuse me, and Simi Valley. It's going to be a close race. I think he uh, wins it. He's a solid conservative. I will tell you, yesterday, uh, the her his opponent had one thousand volunteers from around the state wow. in Simi Valley uh, to get out the vote. We are a very conservative community. I don't think it helped any, uh, because her positions on single payer, uh, ICE, 
et cetera. She is your yes. your Bernie Sanders uh, progressive. Uh, then you have the uh, race to replace Ed Royce down in Orange County. Right. Uh, young Kim is our candidate. By the way, let me I back up just a little bit, Steve. Ken Ken Wright is in the thirty. Uh, it's Ken Wright, not Knight. Correct. Right. Is Kenneth Ken, Weston Ken, Ken Wright? Wright uh, no, yeah, Ken Wright. Wright's in the thirty uh, third Long Beach area. Oh, okay. Uh, Steve and, Knight is in the twenty fifth district. So, right, which is the Santa Cruz Valley, right? Uh, which uh, uh, your station has uh, has a lot of listeners. In yes, the Valley, where the station has lots of listeners. Uh, so it's uh, Steve Knight, who's the incumbent Republican right. congressman, uh, and uh, he should do very well. Good. Uh, down, down in Orange County, you have young Kim going for uh, Ed Royce's seat. Yes. The last poll I saw on, saw on Friday showed her a little bit up, and uh, I think she'll do well. She's in good. We had her on. Yeah. Yeah, and I've known uh, young uh, since I worked with her on the 2001-2002 mm-hmm. Simon for Governor campaign. Uh, then you have Dana Rohrbacher, who yes. I grew up with. We were teenagers together a few yes. years ago. I saw him yesterday. And great guy. Yes. And he, uh, uh, based on the poll, uh, a Reuters came out with a poll, Siena, I believe it was, uh, showing him nine points ahead on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw another poll earlier this evening, showing him only two points ahead. So I go back to what Frank once said, none of the polls are, are accurate or predictive. Right. And I think that it will win that seat uh, for one reason, that the evangelical community has come out in favor of him in a big way, massive voter registration among evangelicals, and a major vote, uh, get out the vote effort among evangelicals in his district. Mm-hmm. Uh, just south of him, you have uh, Mimi Walters. That's going to be a close race. She's about two points ahead or two points behind, based on uh, which poll you believe. Uh, so that's really going to be uh, a tight one. And then you have Diane Harkey for the uh, uh, Daryl Isis seat. Yeah, 49th uh, San District. Diego and parts of Orange County. Yes. Uh, that's going to be difficult for her to win, uh, but her opponent makes Bernie Sanders look as conservative as us. He's a <laughs> wide-eyed liberal. Yeah, exactly. I know they're nuts. They're just out of their yeah. minds. <laughs> yeah, throughout the state and throughout the nation, the Democrats have have nominated the most liberal of people uh, in Georgia yesterday, finally, the uh, Democrat candidate for governor that Oprah Winfrey uh, um, uh, campaigned for a few days ago right. announced on CNN, Jack, uh, Jake Taper's show, that if governor, she's going to work to take away guns. Yeah, I mean, that's how radical she is. Right, and, and and the astonishing thing is, is that even Democrats at, at one time could not say these things openly, uh, especially at election time. They might murmur them, but at least they go on the election trail, uh, election uh, uh, campaign trail, and, and, well, and I'll, say I'll what they needed to. But now they're right out there on the the far well, left. Well, I'll make a prediction for twenty twenty. That yes. that election <coughs> will be a bloodbath on the Democrat side between liberals who have some common sense and reality and progressives who believe that we should become another Venezuela. Yeah. And they are, and the Venezuela type Democrats are taking charge of the Democrat Party. Remember, they gave, uh, uh, more than two thirds of the vote, uh, to Kevin, uh, Leon, uh, to endorse him at the state Democrat level. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think it, it you know, uh, we should uh, maybe bring you down here sometime uh, and maybe get a couple of other people in here to do a little bit of a seminar on this subject. But I believe that no matter what the outcome, there uh, there have been and will continue to be profound changes, both within the Republican and the Democrat Party. Uh, we we conservatives are very much at odds, not not only with the, the the nutcases on the left, but with our own party, who, who that so often refuses to govern in accordance with conservative, even Republican principles. Over on the Democrat side, they have huge tensions within their party, uh, labor. 
uh, average working folks and families who feel abandoned by their own party. They might continue to vote Democrat, but I think that they have huge unresolved tectonic changes going on within the uh, the Democrat Party, and I don't think they can hold it forever. Well, the Democrats, interestingly <laughs> enough, their major donor this year <coughs> was the unions, but also the oil companies. Mm-hmm. Oil companies gave to numerous Democrat candidates for assembly and state senate and trying to believe they're going to have business-oriented Democrats. Yes. There is no such thing. No, I know there isn't. Well, that music that you're hearing means that uh, we're coming up on the hour. Steve, my personal thanks to you, as always, for being part of the show. And and as always, uh, we hope to have you back in the future. I hope you'll be available. And I'll call you here sometime this week. We'll talk about getting you on and maybe doing a little bit of seminar, getting a, uh, a, doing a roundtable here. Thank you so no, much, my friend. Don't don't forget to vote. We won't. But you got it, my friend. Uh, we've uh, had the pleasure of having Steve Frank of California News and Political Views uh, uh, here. Uh, this is Radio Free Los Angeles, RadioFreeLosAngeles.net. Go there, sign up, take the pledge. This is Citizen Sponsored Radio, and we'll be back with you after the hour. We've got Mark Moisier, candidate. Come in, Southern California. This is Radio Free Los Angeles. Do you copy? Repeat, do you copy? Now transmitting from behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of California, we bring you the voice of free men, free markets, and limited constitutional government. Welcome to citizen-sponsored Radio Free Los Angeles with President of the California Taxpayers Union, Mike Alexander and editor of the Taxpayer Gazette, Jonathan Wilson. Okay, we're back for our last half hour here. Mike Alexander, Jonathan Wilson, Radio Free Los Angeles, coming to you from behind the Iron Curtain here in Los Angeles County. Remember, we are the most important city that is metropolitan Los Angeles, the listening area here of Carolina, we are the most important market in the most important county in the most important country, excuse me, most important state in the country. We are very critical. We're very happy to have you here tonight for our pre-election special. And without further delay, we have Mark Moisier, candidate for Secretary of State of California. Uh, uh, Mark, are you on that bicycle again? I wish I was, but no, I haven't been able to be on the bike for the last few months. <laughs> Tell us how you're doing, my friend. I'm delighted you were call- you were able to call in tonight. How's it been going? Oh, it's been a blast. You know, we have uh, the campaign trail. I've driven about 98,000 miles, plus all the miles on the bike and airline yeah. miles in addition to that. But just driving, we've done about 860 campaign appearances around the state. And wow. we've been getting a lot of traction on Facebook because I've been going to interesting locations, like in Malibu, where I discovered 75 registered voters at an address that did not exist, <laughs> 15 of which voted in the June. Yeah. Or maybe down in Gardenia, 31 people registered to vote, claiming as a resident a check-cashing store. Oh, man. Or in Long Beach. The 23 people who claim that the commercial laundromat was their residence. I yeah. somehow guarantee you there are not 23 people showing up at that commercial laundromat curling up in the dryer each night. Nope, nope. It's nobody's bus- business address, and uh, you know, it, it's insane. And this is the same level of corruption that exists really throughout the country in uh, metropolitan areas and other areas uh, controlled by the Democrat Party. This is just what they do for a living. And uh, well, it, here's, it is outrageous. Here's another, fun, here's another fun stat statistic for you since I'm throwing them out. Okay. The oldest person living in the state of California was born on July 24, 1906. Uh-huh. The state of California has 23,000... 108 people who are registered to vote who were born before July 24th, 1906. Right. 
No. Uh, and of those 16,780 of them voted in the presidential election. Right. In 2016. Right. And that's a major scandal. You know, that's a corruption of our, our democracy. And, and they go out there and, and, and somebody manipulates these votes gets somebody into office, and then we are expected to abide by the decisions that they make on the theory that we've had a fair and valid election and that we've lost when, in fact, we've been uh, we've been hustled. Uh, the whole thing is a fraud, a hustle, and a con. I, I have very little confidence in our e- elections. Mark, what has been the reaction of... Um, uh, of people throughout the state. Are they aware of this or were you the one did you have to, did you have to work hard to make them aware of it from from your end? Well, these Facebook videos that I've been doing, we've been yeah. getting like thousands of shares and uh-huh. so the message has really gotten out there uh in the last month, you know, a couple million people have visited my Facebook page and seen these videos over the last, oh, six weeks or so. That's so, powerful. The thing is, we've woke up a lot of people because, you know, when I go and sit down at, you know, in front of a uh, commercial laundry mat and say, you know, right behind me, there are 23 registered voters. You know, earlier this week, I was in front of an office building on Sunset Boulevard that had 50 registered voters. Yes. Um, I talked about almost 400,000 potentially fraudulent voter registration in L.A. County because of the data that we've been receiving from the jury service role. Yes. And this data shows that, you know, the jury service sends out, oh, what was it, about 1.7 million notices every year, and about 22% of them come back with the person saying, I've moved, I no longer live in L.A. County. Right. Or I'm not a citizen of the United States, or the highest number, 267,000, I believe it was, the post office couldn't even find the address and returned it as undeliverable as address. Mm-hmm. And, and the jury system, of course, is a major user of the voter polls uh, polling database. Excuse me, the voter yes, registration database. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, they, that's one of the ways they work off driver's licenses. They have other commercial lists, but that comes back. So this, uh, th- these are uh, addresses are technically undeliverable, which raises the next issue. Uh, certainly, if if the L.A. County uh, jury <coughs> uh, commissioner uh, is uh, the superior court is getting those back, then the uh, the registrar voters must be getting them back from uh, from the post office as well, but yet failing to purge the, their list. What's going on there? Are there? <clears throat> do you suspect that there are people who know that and are then able to uh, to obtain those ballots otherwise using those same names? Well, I mean, there's so many problems. I mean, the thing is, uh, federal law says that the Secretary of State shall maintain the voter roll. Yes. And if if you got a bad address for voter registration, you need to maintain it. That's not a purge. A purge happens when you remove somebody from the voter roll who's supposed to be on the voter roll. Yeah. I you know, like you. what happened when 118,000 people were removed from the L.A. County voter rolls back yes. in June? Yes. That is a purge. That is a purge. I got but it. But when you do not, uh, we remove somebody from the vote dead or somebody who has moved, that's not purging the voter rolls. That is doing, that is obeying the law where you maintain the voter rolls. Yes. And that is the duty of the and state law, yes. they have the duty to maintain the voter rolls, and unfortunately, the current Secretary of State is not even paying lip service to right. that job. He's just ignoring the job. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're, they're lawless, just like the old sanctuary state deal. Well, well, Mark, you know, we wish you the very best. Once again, this is Mark Moisier, M-E-U-S-E-R, and he is the 
Republican conservative candidate uh, for Secretary of State here in the California, a critical office. Uh, you've run a great campaign out there, uh, Mark. We wish you the very best. And let's make sure that no matter what happens, that you call in uh, again so we can review the results and what we do uh, to move forward from here on this important issue of uh, correcting and uh, the voter uh, rolls. Thanks again, Mark. Best of but, luck to you, my friend. Hey, that, that sounds like a great idea, and I yes. look forward to talking to you again. And your voters, if they want to check me out, go, oh. they can go to my uh, – Website, markmoiser.com. Sorry for not mentioning. Markmoiser.com. Go there. Give him support. Give him some love. Give him some money. Good luck out there, Mark. Talk soon, my friend. Thanks. All right. Now, uh, we have just uh, – how much time do I have? I've got one minute. I don't have enough time for a caller, but I will take Carlos when I get back. Uh, yeah, we, we want to cover a few more things. Don't forget to cal- go to CaliforniaTaxpayersUnion.org. We have all the statewide offices, Congress, California legislature, judicial propositions, local. Jonathan has done a great job. That's Jonathan Wilson, the guy over here, but together with the rest yeah, of uh, and, and while you're there why don't you make a contribution we need uh some support there a little bit of love all right that music means that we're on break mike alexander jonathan wilson back with you here in just a minute our number here is 866-870-5752 This is Michael Alexander, Managing Principal of Private Trust Management Group. Our professionals will serve as your trustee or work with a current trustee to rapidly and effectively administer your estate. We serve attorneys and clients throughout Southern California. Remember, you don't have to do it alone. For more information, call us at 626-622-8000 or go to our website, privatetrustees.com. If you'd like to talk with Radio Free Los Angeles, the phone lines are wide open. 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-5752. We're live, local, and here to talk with you. 866-870-KRLA. Hello, back with you here. Uh, Radio Free Los Angeles. I'm Mike Alexander here with Jonathan Wilson. And we have a caller. We can go right to the callers here. We have Carlos in line one from Carson. How are you this evening, Carlos? Uh, a little dismayed as to what's going on with these caravans. Uh, yes. Which are really not grassroots populist movements of the people. They're, they're highly organized. They are. Uh, by, a, by, a, by a group called Pueblo Sin Fronteras which is being sponsored by George Soros' Open Society. And Pueblo is seen from Terras, I mean, city without borders. Right, Pueblo, right. right, exactly. So their, their, their aim is really to bring in the caravans, and uh, their overall objective is to destabilize our country. Yes. And what I'm afraid of is they're going to have a clash here with the troops. Because yes. there allegedly there's reports that there are some MS-13 members among Right. The uh, the people in the most people in the caravans are are good people, but there are some uh, some uh, rather shady groups within them, like MS thirteen members, who I know are going to try and agitate sure. the situation once they get to the border. It's going. I think it's going to turn nasty. Yeah. Well, uh, it's intended to turn nasty, and it won't be successful from their perspective unless it is. And and uh, and I I really. Yeah, uh, I am really very concerned about having our troops on the border. Not so much, uh, not for the reasons that other people uh, are usually concerned, but uh, because, uh, you know, this is just not what our troops want to be used for, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, 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 you know, as a former Marine, uh, the idea that we be put on border duty. Uh, to go up against a uh, a, a gaggle of uh, uh, of illegals coming up from uh, Central America. I mean, it's just not what we do in the Marine Corps. Yeah, uh, 
and uh, other infantry, uh, it, our, our border patrol or enhanced civil guard, uh, civil excuse me, uh, national guard, something like that. But they are there to provoke, and, and they're not going to be happy until somebody gets killed, and they're going to hope that it's a, a it's a martyr, it's a, a pregnant woman, a young child, a victim family. I mean, this is classic Marxist political theater. Uh, and I, yeah, yes, sure. uh, and you know. My my question is this. Yes. Trump absolutely knows of George Soros' involvement. Now, why yes. isn't George Soros brought to uh, brought to uh, uh, justice uh, and charged with some form of espionage? Because he's doing this all over the world. It's just not here. That's he's right. Sponsoring the color revolution. Yeah, all over but the world. We but you know, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. The real problem is so many of these. And by the way, I I. I I can understand why why you're thinking that, and I don't really disagree. It would be wonderful to do that. But as a matter of fact, the biggest problem in our country is Republicans, isn't it? You know, we, we have the presidency, we have the Senate, we have Congress. What we need to do is is to begin to address the root causes, which is why people come here to start with. We give them the bonus of birthright citizenship. Where if you make it across the border, you'll not only become a, a citizen, you will become a, 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 a entitled to a vast amount of of uh, public benefits for the rest of your life, bring your family here. There's the problem. The f- and when you have problems with ants at a picnic, the first thing you do is to put up the food. So that's why I'm not a fan of uh, troops on the border or, or or building the wall. Those are secondary. I'm I'm for both of those things, but we really need to deal with the prior issues, and we attempted to do it here in, in California with Prop 187 back then, and uh, and then when Gray Davis got got in, he failed to defend it. But our problem with the primary problem with illegal immigration is that it is grafted onto the modern welfare state, and ultimately the modern welfare state is what aggravates and makes illegal immigration the problem that it is. Carlos, I want to thank Very you. Very true. Uh, but can I add something to what you're saying? Very quickly, we have you one know, more caller. We, yes. Very very quick here. We are the ones that are responsible, our government, for destabilizing those nations through the through the re- regimes that we sponsored. Uh, John McCain well, and Hillary Clinton sponsored the current regime in Honduras, which, uh, yeah. which overthrew Celaya, who was there before. Right. Uh, yeah, we're not blameless in this. You know, you know, there's been a lot of bad policies. Carlos, I got to go. I got to take one more call before the Government Grifter of the Week Award. Don't be a stranger. Linda, you've been holding for a long time. Can you be good in 60 seconds? Or I'll give you a – let's do two minutes. Will that still give us time to do our Grifter of the yeah, Week? Yeah. Okay. Linda, go. Yeah, Mike, we have no choice but to vote for Diane Feinstein. Uh huh. <laughs> because uh, Leon will be a whole lot worse. You know, in addition to what you said and what your guest said, he's Mr. Fake ID. Yes. He admitted these got relatives. You know, that, you know they have these fake ID. And I heard him last week on Larry Marino admit when they were talking about immigration. I heard him admit that he didn't get his citizenship until 15 years ago. Yeah, so he'd been illegal up until till then. He'd run around the state style, and yeah, this is what we do. And, and you know, the big problem is us. We've got to we got to do that. And I'm I'm with you. I I probably of the two. I dislike uh, De Leon or Leon or whatever the hell his name is. I dislike him more th- than Feinstein. Although, man, she is a piece of work. Uh, but the, but will at least buy us some time. Yeah, well, I'm with you there. Well, Linda, as always, we appreciate your contribution. Thanks for calling in, and uh, and now, uh, you know, we uh, we're going to do our favorite feature of the week. If we have any time left over, I have a few other comments to make. But right now, we want to do our government grift of the week award music maestro, please. 
And Bones. now, live from Glendale, <laughs> California, it's this week's Government Grifter Award. This one's special. Yes, and the nominees <laughs> this week come from the city of Irvine. Yeah. Well, our first nominee, this is an interesting title, and maybe you can shed some light on what yeah. you think this person does for yeah. this kind of money. Could you bring the music down just a little? Okay, good. Go ahead. The Right of Way Administrator. <laughs> I'm not no, kidding. where's that? Right of way administrator. The right of way administrator. Yeah, I guess that's for people walking around city hall and whoever gets the right of way. I don't know. But in 2017, and we get this from TransparentCalifornia.com, yeah. the right of way administrator pulled in total pay and benefits $180,000 a year. Holy mackerel! We got to get our own roving reporter. Anybody wants to be a roving reporter, call in. We need you. <laughs> so nominee number two yeah. is Irvine's chief veterinarian. No. Yes. They, they got a veterinarian they in Irvine? A, they got a chief veterinarian. A chief. Yeah, right. That means All right. there's other veterinarians <laughs> okay. and animal care Does that makes him the top dog? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So the chief veterinarian in <laughs> Irvine in 2017, yeah. total pay and benefits, Two hundred and seventeen thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. what does he do? Take care of those police dogs. <laughs> but our third nominee, yeah. Mike, is it's a very special nominee. Okay, all right. There's a fella running for city council down in Irvine. Yeah, his name is David Che. Uh, how he, do we spell that? Uh, I think it's C H E Y. You want to vote for this guy? Yeah. He's a quintessential government and guy. And he's run for uh, mayor, I think, of Irvine in 2012. Yeah. Unsuccessfully. Yeah, but he's a real family yeah, man. Yeah, but this guy <laughs> has got the business owners in Lug- Laguna Beach in an uproar. Yeah. Because what he has been doing for years now is taking his 86 year old mother <laughs> and dropping her off uh, in a wheelchair in front of businesses in Laguna Beach. Unbelievable. To beg. I love this yeah. guy. Yeah. So this guy is dropping his 86-year-old mother off to beg, right, right. and she's got a sign that says, please help me. Yeah. And he pulls <laughs> up in this brand new Toyota yeah. and drops her off. <laughs> so that's our third right, nominee, yeah. David she, Shea. But she's she's netting 200 a week. Yeah. No, she's doing very well. Right. And when they've been confronted about it. She actually says she enjoys it. She enjoys it. <laughs> and and Mr. Che says that we're it's not we're not doing anything illegal. She enjoys doing this. <laughs> so she turns out as she come this is a this is a generation of grifters, right? Right. So yeah, he puts his own mother out there, out there. Eighty oh, eighty six years old. She collected two hundred bucks. So she's out there five days a week. Right? Yeah, I mean, they they have said that they've watched, there have been business owners watch, and she yeah. could make uh, almost as, she's made $200 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so this this is a politician, but it's his own mother out so there. So now he's trying to, you know. I love this guy. You know, okay. He's, he's run for mayor. All right, so we got the uh, the top dog, All chief right. veterinarian. Yeah. All right. Okay, in the All right, time the for the envelope, end. please. All right, drum roll. And the winner of this week's Government Grifter Awards goes to City Council candidate David Che. Yeah, so yeah, he got it. Congratulations, it. Mr. Che. This is your first <laughs> nomination and first of many Grifter Awards. <laughs> I tell you what, man. Uh, when I saw that story earlier in the week, it was in breakfast. I was choked on, on, on my coffee. It was so darn funny. I just couldn't believe it, man. This guy is so corrupt. He, you know, Danny DeVito plays this kind of character, you know, or the old angel character in. Uh, oh, it was. Uh, well, it uh, reminds me of Dirty Rotten, in the Rockford Files. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Yeah, exactly. I know, man. These guys, they're just the, the lowest of the low. And, I mean, they they exceed our expectations yeah. or, or, or below. Yeah, but I, I'm serious. We do need to get our roving reporters out here. Yeah, uh, at, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Will the station 
allow us. We got to talk with Rod Beat and see, see if the station will allow us to present ourselves as reporters, right? Yeah. Out there for the Grifter Award. Say, so we're looking for the, who was that, that right of way administrator? The right of way administrator. Right, because we want to know what the hell you do for that <laughs> kind of money, right? We want to get this on video. I mean, we're missing it. I mean, I, I'm tired of hearing about O'Keefe and Project Veritas. Okay, right? I mean, it's just it, man. We got it out here. So, hey, we're coming down to the end here. I, I'm getting the wave here uh, from my good friend Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for being our engineer tonight. Thank you, Sterling Contreras, uh, for handling the phones in there. Thank you all. Vote on, on Tuesday. And don't forget, special no vote, uh, yes vote, uh, Proposition 6, which is that stupid gas tax. Get rid of that. Vote against that stupid bank. That that lost city of Los Angeles trying to do vote against any tax effort vote yes on in over there in South Pasadena no on any increase in the sales tax revenue so God bless you.